Hey Stags fans, welcome back to another edition of From the Director's Chair alongside Fairfield Director of Athletics, Paul Schlickman. I'm JJ Duke. We are right in the thick of it, crossover season part two, where we go from winter to the spring, basketball season right on the cusp of the postseason. Meanwhile, spring sports getting going. Busy times here. Busy time for sure. But we have to start with another championship trophy performance, third time in a row, Fairfield Women's Swimming and Diving. It's the hashtag win the Mac, and they just continue to find ways to do it. And they also say that winning a trophy is never easy every time and always has its own story. This one was no different. Yeah, I guess no matter how you look at it, you know, the whole adage that success breeds success or, it, you know, the more you become the hunted instead of the hunter. But uh, they keep rolling. I texted uh, an alum the other day after we won, and uh, he threw out the D word dynasty after uh, their three-peat. Um, but Coach Bruno and staff and our student athletes on the women's side doing an amazing job. You know, I actually spoke to Coach Bruno this morning on the way in, and uh, you could just continue to hear the excitement in his voice. And what he, what came through, um, I think that was different than the previous two was just the way they came together as a team. It was very much a team effort. Came, it was the, the toughest and tightest of the three thus far in terms of scoring and coming down to the wire and coming down to the last day and the last relays. And he said it was really neat to see how they just bonded and came together competitively and, and united as a team to really get them through to get the championship trophy. So thrilled for them. Great job. They just they got it rolling. It's fun to see. It's a grind having that four-day event when you're so far away from home. But it came down to the last event. Like Paul said, it was the 400 free relay, but the women were able to pull it out. Maria Nitti, MAC Championship Swimmer of the Meet. She was a part of five wins, three individual, uh, two relays, and of course part of the final relay. And Coach Bruno once again on top, this time as the co-coach of the year, ironically enough with his old boss over at Iona. That was a pretty neat happening. He actually, he mentioned that too and, and how much, how special that was for him and what it meant to him to, to kind of stand alongside his mentor and receive that award. So that's pretty neat. That's always professional lives coming full circle kind of deal. That's pretty cool. And also on the men's side as well, a, you know, a step in the right direction for that group. They had their best finish yeah. since 2012 and also Avon Fair picking up the first individual win for Fairfield in program history as he won the 400 yard individual medley. Right, we talked about the women's team coming together as a team, certainly the men's side as well, continuing to progress throughout the year, peaking at the right time, a bunch of medalists for them, a bunch of broken records for them. Great to see them come together and compete. Huge strides forward by not only points, but place of finish and, and right there neck and neck with Monmouth for fifth place. So. I, I certainly foresee them continuing to progress and, and great job for them and happy for them to, to taste that, that progress. So that, that was pretty neat to see as well. It's certainly a great weekend up in Buffalo. And now we turn our attention to the hardwood. But before we get to the action on the court, certainly we need to talk about Sam Kramer. Recently, she, was, she received the Hartford Healthcare Courage Award that was uh, given to her back just a couple of weeks ago right here at Fairfield University. It was presented to her by UConn legend Rebecca Lobo and uh, she received this award because of her great perseverance uh, through a difficult time in her life where the passing of her father in the holiday season of 2018 and she gave a very very heartfelt emotional speech and that just shows really the character that she has. She's a great athlete but she's even a better person yeah, off the court. she's exceptional we love our girl sam it's so easy to talk about her because she's such a special young woman and regardless of this award which i was thrilled for her to receive and, and be recognized for the person that she is and what she's gone through and and hopefully be a, a guidepost for others who are going through similar type struggles we all felt the same way about sam the day before she got the award as as the day she received the award because she's just She's a leader amongst her peers. She does all the right things, embodies all of our core values as, as well, if not better than any of our student athletes. She's a gem amongst our family and uh, we're really excited to have her get that recognition. So she's, she's terrific. Coaches, Fairfield's athletic department, I would not be standing here without their support. It certainly does take a village. Thank you. It's certainly well deserved. And also uh, bouncing off of that, she's shown a bit of a ice water in her veins a couple of game winners through the season one to canisius at home buzzer beater to monmouth away and that women's team right now certainly in the mix for a top three finish heading into the uh, tournament she, she had a heck of a 24 hours right she goes yeah. down to monmouth the next day and hits the hits the game winner so the the good vibes were, were coming through and yeah we're excited to see the the early success of the women's program and they're coming up on 
kind of a gauntlet of MAC competitors. So they've got to play their best, just as it is on the men's side. It's, it's there for the asking. It's there for the taking, I should say. So, you know, I think we've, we've shown that we can compete with anyone, and, and we just got to kind of put our best foot forward for the remainder of the MAC, MAC stretch here. This men's side is one for the record books, and how literally every team has a chance to you know make some strides and i think right now the way that it's going it's not going to be the team that peaks going into the tournament it's going to be the team that peaks at the tournament that means fairfield has as good of a chance as anyone i think you're right it's unlike any league season i've ever been a part of i think the the gap from first to 11th is three games anybody can beat anybody on even given night we've got a nice stretch coming up four straight home games so we're looking forward to that, hopefully get on a little bit of a roll heading into you know the, the final stretch and as you said into Mac play. So it's, it's a really key stretch coming up for both teams and hopefully they can uh, get in a little groove and, and peak at the right time because anybody could come out of uh, Atlantic City as, as the champion at this point. That's what there's just the stark reality of it. Yeah, it's going to be a whole lot it's of gonna fun. Be, it's going to be a lot. If you haven't ever gotten down to the boardwalk hall to catch a game, I truthfully say you need to go there because it is a great venue for sports and yeah it's going to be a whole lot of fun in a couple of weeks time but like i said it's crossover season so winter sports going on spring sports have gotten underway and we're here at rafferty stadium once again which is kind of our home base if you will for uh this show and the men's lacrosse team has gotten off to a brilliant start 2-0 two, two wins at home to start over Stony Brook and merrimack and this is a group that's certainly energized and coach andrew baxter has got them going Sure does. It's great to see. It was a, a great home opener against Stony Brook this past weekend and just a, a great atmosphere. Guys were flying around. They were playing with the signature elements that Coach Baxter is trying to instill in them and his staff are trying to instill in them. And that's just play hard, play fast, out hustle your opponent and do the little things that add up to to the big things that turn into victories and just value playing lacrosse for Fairfield University. And so that came through with Flying Colors. Thrilled for him to get his first W as a stag here at home. And we picked up another grind it out win yesterday against Merrimack here. So great start for them, really excited. Doesn't get any easier. They got to turn the page and go down to Georgetown and face a really tough traditional opponent down there. But a great start and I think that's going to bode well for them. It's going to be a fun season. And also you had a great moment after that game against Stony Brook where you presented Coach Baxter with the game ball and a really touching moment as well as everyone, as you said, kind of coming together under this Fairfield brand. And they're showing that this is going to be a tough team to, uh, to beat. Congratulations! It was a great moment. It's, it's one of the, the highlights of, of being in this in this profession and this business is is recognizing people in special moments like that and and taking the moment to just to stop and say hey this is this is pretty cool and this is a great moment for you personally for our program for the kids and just and just pay homage to that and uh, it was really neat we love trying to do that it's, it's all of the, one of the best things that i have the opportunity to do is just recognize the great people around you in, in special times like that. And uh, it was great for him. We actually were fortunate to, uh, his, his mom and dad were here, so we had his dad in the locker room as well. So that was a really neat personal moment for those two as well. So that stuff's, that stuff's the great part about what we do here in college athletics that, that uh, makes it really worthwhile. Could not be prouder to present Coach Baxter with the game ball. Of course, also in addition to men's lacrosse getting going, women's season underway, baseball and softball getting their south swing started, golf, tennis, rowing, all getting going soon. So make sure to stay with us on FairfieldStags.com. And for baseball and softball, they're going to be getting their home schedule underway just at the end of March. Of course, the weather has to be a good friend to us, but with uh, the season coming strong, it's going to be a whole lot of fun. Um, and of course, obviously, we have to continue talking about one of your favorite things, which is our student athletes proving their worth, not only on the fields and the courts, but also in the classroom. All 20 Fairfield varsity teams with a 3.0 GPA or better in the fall of 2019. Several sports had their best GPA in you know, over a decade. So that must obviously bring a big smile to your face. It always does. You're right. And I think, you, you know, you introduce it in similar fashion, rightfully so, every time we talk about it. But... Um, it seems as though every time we do, there's there's another another superlative to talk about or another you know aspect of progression relative to do that. So the, our our student athletes keep outdoing themselves. So the the first time since we've been tracking it, be it 15, 16 years, every one of our teams gets the 3.0 
mark for a semester. Just incredible output. We have almost half a dozen teams achieve their highest GPA during that same time frame. So arguably one of the best, if not the best, academic semester we've had as a, as a department. So really proud of them. It's a tribute to our student athletes and their, their intellectual commitment to that and how they manage their day and our, our coaches who foster that commitment and, and certainly our academic staff. So it's total team effort and couldn't be prouder of, of that those set of accomplishments. Really awesome. And certainly got a well-deserved break over the holidays as well as they get back to work here in the spring. And now at this time, this is where we would usually say, well, it's our opportunity to ask this gentleman to my right here, Paul Schlickman, about anything going on at Fairfield Athletics. You guys have been bulging our inbox, to be fair, about one topic and one topic only. So we're just going to get right to it. Paul, do you have any current updates for us on the Convocation Center? Convocation Center? People asking about that? What no, a it's just, you know, just a shock, right? Uh, the momentum and, uh, and excitement continue to build, rightfully so, for all the reasons that we've talked about. You know, and, it's, uh, and I certainly understand that, and we're, we appreciate that. The, the passion that our, that our constituents have for the coming of that building is phenomenal. Um, can't wait to, I wish we could fast forward and, and get to, you know, the winter of 22 when we're walking in there and, and seeing a brand new modern facility that we call our home. But, but between now and then, we continue to make good progress. So all of our transition plans that, that we have to put in place for that interim period between this spring and, and uh, the time that new building opens for the programs that utilize it, we're, we're in good shape with those. Our, our fundraising benchmarks, we're, we're getting very close to achieving those. And uh, we hope to, as we have indicated, hope to get you know, final approval come this spring so that we can begin the process of making some changes in, inside there and then seeing uh, the gradual transformation from old alumni hall to uh, the new convocation center. So it's incredibly exciting. We're on track and uh, very excited about the direction we're going. Well, certainly one of those things, if we're talking about changing from the current to the future, well, we do have to celebrate the current as well. And of uh, Obviously, there's only a couple more home games for both the men's and the women's basketball team. Uh, the men are in action their last two games on Friday, February the 28th against Quinnipiac, and then Sunday the 1st against Ryder at 2. The women home the following week, Thursday the 5th against Siena, and then Saturday the 7th against Niagara. And that day, Saturday, March the 7th, is actually a pretty uh, important day because that is the last game at the Colonel Alumni Hall, but also a chance for you all to give a, a proper send-off. Uh, it's going to be the last call at Alumni Hall that will be taking place that Saturday, March 7th evening, starting at 7 p.m. It's a chance for you all to, you know, like I said, celebrate the long history of that building. It's been around for over 60 years. It's seen some great days and a chance for you to share some of the stories and enjoy that facility for one more night. It's going to be a fun evening. I know a lot of things are planned for it, but you know, tell us a little bit about how that came together and what people should expect. Well, I think it was, it was a combination of, of us thinking about, you know, the home stretch here, um, certainly being cognizant of the strong emotional attachment and feelings people have for the building and particularly with our alumni and a lot of our constituents in town and and frankly a lot of faculty and staff too who who've been here a long time just the the great memories they have and attachment they have to watching games at alumni hall and so we wanted to there's a lot of of nostalgia that goes along with that we wanted to try and have people have the moment to relive that one more time or just kind of bask in it and and kind of you know, in their own minds, um, have one last look and fast forward to, to the exciting times that are ahead. So it'll be a very, uh, I think, nostalgic and emotional opportunity for us to kind of share in that and, uh, and offer that opportunity to, to our family members, if you will. Um, the nice part is that if, if you can't make it on March the 7th, and we expect a great turnout for all those, from all those constituents that I allude to, it, it actually works out really well, our final stretch of games within the MAC on both sides. I think we've got four out of six on both sides. So a bunch of opportunities to kind of get to Alumni Hall and kind of get your, your last chance to be there and, and take it all in. So we're excited about the home stretch and hopefully have some sellouts and some great atmospheres. And we need everybody's support. So come on in and, and, uh, and uh, help us out. And uh, let's make our last run and our last go-around 
an Alumni Hall a good one. Yeah, pack every game, right? Pack every game. And we you, need it. You can do that by visiting fairfieldstags.com slash T-I-X. That's fairfieldstags.com slash T-I-X. So you can be a part of a couple of the last games at Alumni Hall. And I mentioned earlier, again, the dates. You can find that at fairfieldstags.com. That's going to do it for this edition of From the Director's Chair. Paul, as always, a pleasure. JJ, thanks. Good to see you. Absolutely. And as always, fans, go Stags.